Hi, Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. Uh, welcome, we're excited to, uh, to, to get out and, and talk to startups, people that are founding companies when they come out of stealth mode. We're in a great position that, that we get a chance to talk to them early and we're really excited uh, to have a CUBE conversation with Karthik Rao, the founder and CEO of Signal Effects. Just coming out of stealth, congratulations. Thank you, Jeff. So how long have you been working behind the scenes trying to get this thing going? Yeah, we've been at it for two years now. So two years. So my co-founder and I started the company in uh, February of 2013. So excited to finally launch and uh, make our product available to the world. All right, excellent. Well, congratulations. That's Thank always you. a great thing. Uh, we've launched a few companies on theCUBE, so hopefully this will be another great success. So yeah. talk a little bit about, um, first off, you and your journey. We have a lot of entrepreneurs that watch the show, and, and I think it's, it's an interesting a topic as to how do you get to the, the place where you basically found and launch a company. Yeah, absolutely. I started my career at a company, at a cloud company, before cloud really existed as a market. <laughs> it was a company called LoudCloud. Uh, oh which yeah, was of course, trying to do Mark Andreessen, the, right? Early right, days. Mark Andreessen, Ben Horowitz are two of the co-founders right. of that company. And uh, we were trying to do what the public cloud vendors are doing today before the market was really all that big and before the technologies really existed to do it well. But that was my, my first introduction to cloud, just okay. right out of college. And that's where I met my co-founder, Philip Liu, as well. Phil and I were both working on the monitoring products at, at LoudCloud. Uh, from there, I ended up at VMware for a good run of about seven years where I ran product. Uh, had always wanted to start a company, and then a couple of years ago, Phil and I uh, thought that the timing was right, and uh, we had a great idea and decided to go build SignalFX together. Okay, so so what was kind of the genesis of the idea? You know, a lot of times it's a cool technology looking for a problem to solve, or a lot of times it's a problem that you know, and if I only had a, one of these, it would solve my problem. So how did the how did that whole process work? Yeah, it was rooted in personal experience. Uh, my co-founder, Phil, was at Facebook for several years and was responsible for building the monitoring systems at Facebook. Uh, and through our personal experience and, and what we'd seen in the marketplace, we had a, a fundamental uh, belief and a vision that monitoring for modern applications is now an analytics problem. Uh, modern applications are distributed. Uh, they're not you know, a single database running on a single system. Uh, you know, even small companies now have hundreds of VMs running on public cloud uh, infrastructure. And so the only way to really understand what's happening across all of these distributed applications is to collect the data centrally and, and use analytics. And so that was our fundamental insight when we started SignalFX. Uh, what we saw in the marketplace was that most of the monitoring technologies uh, haven't really evolved in the past 15 or 20 years, and they're still largely designed for traditional static enterprise applications where if you get an alert when an individual node is down or a static threshold's been passed, that's enough. But that doesn't really work for modern apps because they're so distributed. Right. If one node out of your 20 nodes is having a problem, it doesn't necessarily mean that your application is having a, uh, having a problem. Uh, and so the only way to really draw that insight is to collect the data and do analytics on it, and that's what SignalFX okay, is Okay, really about. because of that distributed nature of modern, of modern apps and modern architecture. Yes, there are three things that are fundamentally different. Number one, modern applications are distributed in nature, uh, and so you really have to look at patterns across many systems. Uh, number two, they're changing far more frequently than traditional enterprise apps because they're hosted for the most part, cloud right. applications, right. and so you can push changes out every day if you want to. Uh, and then third, they're typically operated by product organizations and not IT organizations. So you have developers uh, or DevOps organizations that are actually operating the software. Uh, and those three changes are, are quite substantial and require a new set of products. Right, and so the other guys are just, they're still kind of in the, you know, fire off the, the pager alert, something is going down. It's very noisy, yes, when you're firing off alerts every time an individual <laughs> alert goes off when you've got thousands of when VMs, thousands right? Of VMs, and right. we all know that the trend these days is towards microservices architectures, you know, small componentized, uh, you know, containers or VMs, and so you don't have to have a very sophisticated large application to have a lot of systems. And so do you fit into other existing kind of infrastructure monitoring systems or kind of infrastructure management systems? Because I'm sure, you know, it's another tool, right? The guy's got to manage a lot of stuff. How does that work? Yeah, we are focused on the analytics part of the problem. Okay. And so we uh, collect data from any sources. So our customers are typically sending us data uh, you know, infrastructure data that they're collecting using their own agents. We have agents that we can provide to collect it. Uh, a lot of the developers are instrumenting their own metrics that they care about. So for example, they might care about uh, latency metrics and knowing uh, latencies by customer, by region. So they'll send us all that data and then we provide a very rich analytics uh, solution and platform for them to monitor all of this and, and in real time detect patterns and anomalies. So you, you just said you have customers, but you're coming out of stealth mode. So you have some beta customers already? Yes, we have great customers already. Okay. Uh, not just beta customers, right. we've got great customers. Real customers, awesome. Yes. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, they're very excited about our product, and uh, we, you know, they range from uh, small startups to fairly large uh, web companies that are 
sending in tens of millions of, of data points every day into SignalFX. Right, right, and again, in the interest of sharing the knowledge with all of our, our entrepreneurs out there, you know, when did they get involved in the process? How much of the kind of product development definition did they, did they participate in? Because you said you've been at it for a couple of years. Yeah, we had a lot of conviction about the space from okay. the very beginning because we, our team had solved this problem for themselves in, in previous experiences. Um, but we did include, we, we've been in beta for about six months prior okay. to launch. And so over the course of those six months, we recalibrated based on feedback we got from customers. But on the whole, we, you know, our we, philosophy and the approach that we took was, was pretty much validated by the early customers that we engaged with. Okay, excellent. And so um, I assume you're venture funded. We are. Can you can you talk about who your uh, who your uh, backers are? Yes, we raised twenty eight and a half million dollars. Uh, twenty eight million dollars. Yeah, twenty eight point five million dollars nice. uh, from Andreessen Horowitz. Okay. Uh, with Ben Horowitz on our board. Okay. Uh, and Charles River Ventures with Dave Yulerker on our board. And how big are you now, time in terms of the company? Uh, well, we're just getting started now, right? This yeah, is kind of million. day you one. Put of all the, that money to work. Well, we've, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, we've got a great group of engineers. Our our, our company is. Um, you know, in, still in the few dozen people stage at this point, okay. but uh, we're planning to invest uh, aggressively in building out our team, both on R&D and on the go-to-market side this Excellent. year. Excellent. Once you detect patterns and anomalies, what's kind of the action steps? Do you work with, with other systems to sw swap stuff out? You got Because now I hear like it's these huge data centers, they don't swap out disks, they don't swap out machines, they swap out racks, they soon they'll be swapping out data centers. So what are some of the prescriptive things that people are using that they couldn't do before by using your tool. Yeah, I'll give you a great example of that. One of our early beta customers, uh, they do code pushes very aggressively. You know, once a week they'll push out changes into their environment, and uh, they had a signal effects console open, which, and we're a real-time solution, so every second they were seeing updates of what was happening in their infrastructure. They pushed out their code and they immediately detected a memory leak, and uh, they saw their memory usage just growing uh, immediately after they did their code push, and they were able to roll it back uh, before any of their users uh, noticed any issues. Uh, and so that's an example of these days, a lot of problems introduced into environments are human-driven problems. It's right. a code push, it's a, a new user gets onboarded or a new customer gets onboarded and all of a sudden there's 10x the load onto your systems. And so when you have a product like SignalFX where you can in real time understand everything that's happening in your environment, you can quickly detect these changes and determine what the appropriate next step is. And that appropriate next step will depend on your application and who you are and what you're building. Right. Uh, so our key philosophy is we get out of your way but we give you all of the insights and the tools to figure out what's happening in your right, environment. Right, that's interesting. That really kind of too comes from from your partner's you know kind of Facebook experience, right? Because they're pushing out new code all the time on those. Yeah, things. make fast and break things, right? Right, exactly. And then you're at VMware, so you know kind of the enterprise side. So I wonder if you could speak a little bit about kind of this consumerization of IT on the enterprise side, and not so much the way that the look and feel of the thing works, but really taking best practices from consumer IT companies like Facebook, like mm -hmm. Amazon, that really changed the game, because it used to be the big enterprise software guys had the best apps, now it's, it's really flipped, um, where people like Google and Netflix and those guys have the best apps, and even more importantly, they drive the expectation of the behavior of an application. Mm -hmm. Uh, are enterprises finally getting it, and, and, and are they really embracing it? We're definitely seeing uh, a growth in, in new application development. I think, you know, when I spent a lot of time talking to CIOs uh, at enterprises as well, and uh, they all understand that in order to be competitive, you have to invest in applications. It's not enough to just view IT as a cost center, and they're all beginning to invest in application development. Uh, and in some cases, these are digital media teams that are separate from you know, traditional IT and other places. It's, uh, um, you know, they're, they're more closely tied together, but we absolutely see a kind of a growth in application development. Uh, and many of these end up looking a lot like the development teams that we see here in the Bay Area, uh, you know, in companies that are building SaaS and consumer cloud apps. Yeah, exciting time. So yes. you're coming out of stealth. What's kind of your, your next kind of uh, milestone that you're looking forward to if a big some announcements, you got a show you're going to kind of launch at, where, uh, where are we going to see you make a big splash? Well, uh, for us, it's, it's steadily building our business, and so okay. we hope to, uh, you know, we're launching now, and uh, we've got a lot of great customers already, and uh, hope to sign on uh, several more, and uh, help our customers build great applications, awesome. so that, that's our focus well, for Well, again, this year. congratulations, two years, uh, that's a big development project. Yeah. Karthik Thank Rao, you much, founder and CEO of Signal Effects, uh, just launching their company, coming out of stealth. We'd love to get them on theCUBE, share the knowledge with you guys, both the people that are trying to start your own company, take a little inspiration, as well as, as the people that need this service to monitor the cloud with a modern application. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. You're watching Jeff Frick, CUBE Conversation. See you next time.